As you recently saw, I did a one hour bass fishing challenge at the lake behind me and I was able to catch a nice bass. But while we were doing that, I noticed a lot of bluegill here. So today we're gonna do the exact same thing, but for bluegill. Now, honestly, I do only have one hour to fish, so we're gonna call it quits at about 5.45 p.m. I have to get back, cook dinner for the lady and I. And in addition to that, it's honestly raining right now and it's about to pick up. That's why we're doing the intro in the car. But enough yipping and yapping, the clock is obviously ticking. So let's get to casting and blasting, let's go. Go, 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 go. So like I said, we're after bluegill. So I'm just using this little bobber and I've got a little split shot and then I've got a 180th ounce mule jig. It's a white color. And then I'm gonna put some Berkeley gulp on there. I gotta find an area that's slightly out of the wind though. I think we're better off by walking to the opposite side of the lake. Here's these Berkeley gulp waxies. I'm just gonna put one of those on this uh, white mule jig. These things smell horrendous, just FYI. I know that there's definitely bluegill in here. Um, I saw a lot of them. Today it's not very sunny, so my guess is they're not going to be right up on the banks. They'll probably be suspended around in this grass. I brought the Berkeley Gulp maggots as well. I tend to like those just a little bit more for bluegill, um, but the waxworms work. I just think the scent of the, the maggots for some reason, I think that the bluegill just react better to it. The other thing is it's more of a brownish color versus a white. And I don't know necessarily if that makes a difference or not, but I just feel like I've had more luck on the, the Berkeley Gulp maggots. I used to just like only be a bass guy, hardcore only bass. Obviously you guys have seen that I've gotten big time into trout, but I'm really just starting to love panfish, like perch and bluegill and any sunnies that I can find. And, and I think eventually I'll probably get into crappie quite a bit as well. I think I just really have learned that I just appreciate all types of fish, um, whether they're sport fish or not, to be quite honest with you. This would be an interesting bank to toss a jerk bait on for some bass. It's just really deep with good vegetation down under. Just got out the Berkeley Gulp uh, maggots. I'm gonna go ahead and make a power move to one of these because I think that's gonna pay off. 15 minutes in and not a single fish. If you would have told me that leading into today, I'd have called you crazy. I mean, the freaking bluegill. They can't be that hard, right? Well, I guess we're gonna keep moving. I'm using my seven foot Daiwa Presso ultralight and then I've got this uh, Fluger 30. Oh, fish on, fish on. There it is. Okay. All right. Nothing big, my friends, but it's a start. We found them. So the fish right here, let's see, hopefully there's more in this area, but essentially we've got a big sandy flat and then there's a little bit of sparse vegetation over here and he was using that vegetation. My guess is when it gets sunny, they come up on this flat and start sunning themselves, kind of trying to work up some energy, probably start looking for minnows, so on and so forth. Um, but right now, since it's overcast and kind of cold, they're using that vegetation and just chilling. Oh, already getting bit. Oh, I missed him. I pulled it away from him. See, that's my biggest problem when I'm uh, bluegill fishing. I'm just such a bass fisherman that, uh, a lot of times I, I pull it away a little too aggressively. For bass, it's like you gotta set the hook like a champ, you know? For bluegill, it's a lot more of a ease back, just reel up. Can we get number two? Come on, number two. Everybody likes a good number two. Oh, there's number, no, I pulled it away from him again. Oh, oh, he's just playing with it. Eat it, dude. <gasps> Oh, you little silly goose. He's just pulling on it. I, my guess is this is an absolute dinkage. Oh gosh, I almost stepped in the water. I'm getting excited, folks. I'm getting really excited. It's probably like a three inch bluegill, but I'm excited. Okay, that fish, what is he doing? Why did he do this? You know, I just get energy from catching fish, guys. I don't know if you're that way or not, but I definitely am. When I start catching fish, I just it just changes my mood. Oh baby, my bobber just moved. He's playing with it again. This fish is, oh, there he is. Come on, eat it. You little son of a gun. I think it's just a tiny gill, but it kind of just makes me want to catch him even. Yes, yes, it was a small gill. This guy played with it a thousand times before eating it. About the same as the last one, but look at that mule jig, my friends. Right in the top of the gullet. I love it, I love it, I love it. He's pretty pale, man. Not a lot of colors to this one, but you can, whoa, whoa. Okay, he's back. You can see a lot of that purple shimmer in them. And that, my friends, is why I really like baits uh, that have a little bit of purple in them when I'm bass fishing. Today, we're kind of doing a little bit of experimenting. Is it gonna be overpopulated with small ones or is there gonna be some big ones mixed in? I've seen some decent fish swimming around. Um, most of them have been pretty small though. Whew. Calm down, Ethan. I know you're excited. Oh <gasps> my Lord, he just took off with it. Bluegill, baby. 
bluegill, they're all the same size. Now, granted, usually schooling fish hang out with each other of the same size. You know, that's the same with bass, that's the same with anything. If you find a school of fish, they usually hang with other fish than the same size. My guess is there's probably a lot of fish about this size in this lake, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna keep breaking it down and see what we can figure out. I've caught three fish off of one little weed bed that's this big. There he is, boom shakalaka. Eh, it feels a little bigger, guys. A little fatter, bigger shoulders, and I like to see it. He's about the same length, but he's just, he's, he's taller. He's a taller fish. You can see how, how it fills up a little bit more in my palm. Not a big fish, but not a, not a small fish either. So I'll take him. I'll definitely take him. You know what? I got to get a picture of him because I love bluegill and I want to show the world on Instagram. I love watching them swim away. They're such cool little critters. How much time we got? It's 5.18. Holy cannoli, folks. We've only got 25 more minutes. I wish I would have found this school of fish earlier. Well, we learned something today. These fish are positioned in a, like little isolated weed beds next to a sandy flat. And I think the sandy flat is just so critical for them early spring. And so I think that's why they like these weed beds specifically because there's weed beds everywhere. But I think because they're adjacent to this sandy flat, I think that's the learning. Eh, that's my that's my thoughts. Oh, I have a fish. Man, he don't want to come up. That's about the same size. A little prettier though. Got a little bit more orange on his breast. Another about the same size. Oh, oh, buddy's back. There you go, bud. Come on, swim away. Okay, he's good. Where's like that absolute slabage, you know? Oh, oh my gosh, already getting pulled on. Got him. My lord. It's madness. It's bluegill madness, folks. And they're all freaking this big. You know, Team Dink, it is what it is. It is what it is. Am I one to complain about small gills? Uh, I think you guys know that I'm not. Now, for those of you wanting to see more bass fishing, don't worry. Hang tight. We're going to get back to bass fishing. But here at Online Outdoorsman, you know, we like to incorporate a little bit of other species too. I find bluegill extremely relaxing and uh, this week at work has been really hectic. And so I just, honestly, I just wanted to relax. I didn't want to think. I didn't want to have to try super hard. I just wanted to catch fish. This guy. Uh-oh, we're getting a call. It's probably work. Hello, this is Ethan. Okie dokie, Pinocchio. Uh, yeah, so just got a call from work, but we handled it. And now it's time to just smash a big gill. I will say I usually like uh, shorter rods, but when I'm casting a bobber and I want to get it out there a little ways, it's nice having that seven foot rod because if I get bit way out there at the end of the cast, I can pick up a lot of lines, still set the hook. And then on top of that, I can just get a lot more distance on my cast in the first place. Oh no, German shepherds are jumping in the water and disturbing my fish. Currently, I'm fishing right here and these guys let their dogs just come chomp. Yep, well, there go the bluegill. Daggummit, them German shepherds may be cute and amazing and I love them very much, but they just scared off my bluegill. And that is not cool. These bluegill are like legit being super finicky right here. I don't know why they're doing this, but it's just like, oh, I missed them because I was trying to explain something to you. Dang it. I just, I just try to explain things. And this is how the bluegill, oh, my Lord, why am I pulling it away like an idiot? Well, this is upsetting folks. They, they pull it under for just like a split microsecond. And then by the time I pull up on them, they've already dropped it. What time is it? 5.39. My gosh, we're technically, we only have six minutes. I gotta get a clutch fish. Can we get a clutch fish? We're running out of time, we're running out of time. Please, Bobber, do me a favor and just go under. Last two minutes. We gotta end this with one more fish. Come on. There's gotta be one right here. There's gotta be, oh, there he is, there he is. Yes, last fish of the day. It's about the same size as all the other ones. Go figure. Here's the thing, folks. He's my last fish of the day and I'm proud of him. I like him. There's a lot of fish about this size in this lake, obviously a little overpopulated probably, but I'm still confident that there's probably some big ones in here as well. Um, you know, you just gotta, you gotta stay confident. Good news is we accomplished our mission and we didn't really get rained on that much. Just a, a slight sprinkle, but nothing bad, nothing bad at all. Folks, I tell you what, today's mission was a success. No, we didn't catch any big bluegill, but we do have a better idea now what kind of bluegill population is here. It's a big one. Um, hopefully we can find some big bluegill here in the future, but overall I had fun with this one hour fishing challenge. If you wanna see more one hour fishing challenges in the future, make sure to comment below because I'm having fun with them and I think I'm gonna try to do more of these in the future, but I would love to hear your perspective as well. Regardless, I wanna go home and eat some dinner, so that's what I'm gonna do. We'll catch you next time.